A cup final awaits at Wembley this afternoon. Welcome to our coverage of the Papa John's Trophy showpiece. The spotlight shines on Bolton Wanderers and Plymouth Argyle as the League One promotion contenders go in search of silverware. Between them attracting well over 70,000 fans to the National Stadium. It is a day to make some memories, an occasion to embrace and enjoy. And there is the palpable prize at the end of it for one of these famous football clubs. Brought on by celebrity supporters Josh Widdicombe and Vernon Kay representing their respective sides in the Wembley sunshine. Where the stage is a suitable one. And a fixture that should be a great advert for this competition for League One football. Featuring two of its uh, promotion protagonists. A century on from featuring in the first ever football match at Wembley Stadium, winning the 1923 FA Cup final, the famous uh, White Horse final against West Ham. Bolton Wanderers are back again for the first time since losing an FA Cup semi-final to Stoke City here a dozen years ago. They've won and lost playoff finals, as well as all those great FA Cup occasions that are woven into the fabric of this historic football club. And in 1989, they won a previous incarnation of this competition with a 4-1 final thumping of Torquay United. The return to the grand stage this season is symbolic, though less than four years since the club almost ceased to exist. Days away from liquidation before the takeover that has helped transform their fortunes. This is the chance for Bolton Wanderers to show the watching world that the dark days are behind them as they re-emerge, blinking into the... Wembley spotlight a chance as well to say thank you to a fan base to a town that stood by them throughout it all and after two previous playoff finals this is a first ever cup final for Plymouth Argyle and just a third ever Wembley visit in their 137 year history Plymouth have but painful memories of the last one a 2-0 defeat to AFC Wimbledon in the 2016 League 2 playoff final which came 20 years after they beat Darlington at the same stage in what was their first ever trip here. They have never before reached the final of this competition and indeed had never got beyond the group stages of it since the current format was introduced back in 2016. Before this current seven-match run to Wembley with the progress confirmed only in a penalty shootout, semi-final success against Cheltenham Town nearly six weeks ago. Chance to make a little bit of history in front of what is expected to be the biggest crowd in European football anywhere this weekend. A weekend that included the Classica in the Bundesliga. Bolton Wanderers selling around 34,000 tickets for this. Plymouth over 38,000 as the Pilgrims make the long trip to the National Stadium. A little less pressure, perhaps, than a playoff final. The final game of the season. Not this one. There is business to be taken care of in League One after today. That maybe is their priority. This is a chance to really enjoy the occasion. To make memories with their fan base. This is the nervous wait, isn't it, for the players in the tunnel. Interesting to note that the Bolton squad visited the stadium yesterday to try and get their bearings. They made the trip from Bolton on Friday. Plymouth coming a day later and did not visit this stadium ahead of the game. This is where it all becomes very real for them. Bolton Wanderers and Plymouth Argyle dream of Wembley glory. Two teams for whom promotion has remained a priority, but today they set aside the chase for the championship with silverware at stake in the spring sunshine. Both clubs targeted this competition at the start of the season as a realistic reward. And they will be soaking up these scenes. They have navigated seven games in it already en route to Wembley. One more push required this afternoon to take the trophy.
so many family and friends in attendance two young managers with big reputations making their way in the coaching game leading their teams out today savoring these scenes such pride for both of these clubs now the national anthem Day Scott of uh, South East London with the rousing rendition of the national anthem ahead of kickoff, just uh, helping to set the stage here. All the preparations coming down to this. Let's have a look at the lineups for you. It's over two weeks since Bolton were last in action, but they've made just two changes from that one-all draw at Sheffield Wednesday. Aaron Morley and Elias Kachunga, their goal scorers in the semi-final win at Accrington, both come back in for Kieran Lee, who begins on the bench, and Victor Adebayo, who is cup-tied. Gethin Jones for Luke Mbeta and Kyle Dempsey for Lee, are the two changes from that semi-final success nearly six weeks ago. George Johnston and MJ Williams are both fit again and back on the bottom bench for the first time since January. Plymouth have made four changes from their last game, the 2-0 win at Accrington before the international break. Dan Scar replaces the injured James Bolton at the back. Captain Joe Edwards returns, whilst there are starts as well for Jay Matete and Callum Wright. Saxon Early is cut tied for Nazaz and Matt Butcher dropped to the bench. Jordan Houghton is the only survivor from the last Plymouth squad to play at Wembley seven years ago. Goalkeeper Callum Burton is the only one to play every minute of this cup run and save three penalties in the semi final shootout win against Cheltenham. So many players hoping to enhance reputations here. Some season that Dion Charles has had already. 20 goals for club and country and factoring in the two that he scored the first two that he scored for his country the Northern Ireland European Championship qualifying win against San Marino last weekend quite a week it has been for Bolton's top scorer this really is the chance to uh, make some memories only one previous Plymouth player Ronnie Morge back in 1996 has ever scored at Wembley. Ryan Hardy there is their top scorer this season. Hoping to follow in his footsteps. Hoping to go down in club legend, as indeed are the two coaches on the touchline today. Both with big ambitions to go even further in the managerial game. Both who've made such impressive starts to their coaching careers. Ian Ebert twice a Wembley winner in playoff finals with Blackpool. Beaten in the final of this competition, though, with Chesterfield. He has known both sides of the story. The honour of refereeing at Wembley today falls to Ben Toner. In his eighth season now as an EFL official, it's his seventh match in this competition this season. No VAR in operation for the final, but we do have goal line technology in place. Bolton are the nominated home team, having won the draw, so it is they that get to sport their traditional colours in the white and blue. Their supporters occupying the east end of the stadium. Plymouth in their third kit. In the grey to avoid the colour class today. Something that Stephen Schumacher... The manager has been disappointed about in the build-up, but the Green Army are out in force to the west of the stadium. Just slightly outnumbering their Bolton counterparts, but only slightly. It's a wonderful atmosphere. 
which has been building all day. In the countdown to kickoff, the wait is almost over. Everybody will take the knee ahead of kickoff. So will it be Bolton Wanderers or Plymouth Argyle? A trophy at stake today. Two teams that harbour hopes of promotion at the end of the season. But that is on hold for the next 90 minutes, maybe longer. Both have impressed in negotiating difficult routes to this final in a competition that they certainly prioritised back in the autumn. Today is the day that they reap their reward. But only one of them will be celebrating in the sunshine at the end. These first few minutes will be fascinating as uh, players from both sides, very few of whom have featured at Wembley before, try and deal with the nerves, try and adjust to the big stage. They've both had plenty of time to prepare because of the international break. And there's the first attack of note. It will carry through to James Trafford. Ryan Hardy couldn't quite get the touch to it. The Plymouth number nine. Scorer of 13 goals in League One this season and a further four in this Papa John's Trophy. So many stories wherever you look today and many more waiting to be written maybe over the course of this contest. Hasn't scored hard in his last three games now, which given the standards he set this season represents something of a dry spell. Now it's Bolton's turn to try and launch their first attack. Haunted in its infancy by Dan Scar. He's getting his opportunity today on his return from injury. He had to be patient to get back in the side. Does so because of the absence of Plymouth's Bolton this afternoon. An untimely hamstring injury suffered by James Bolton a couple of games ago. Has kept him out, Scar slotting in. And an early free kick to face with a couple of minutes on the clock. Set pieces likely to be an important part of the story at Wembley today. The skipper is forward for this one. Ricardo Santos will be an obvious target. Well, he's still looking for his first Bolton goal in his third season at the club. away by James Wilson plenty in white adventured forward none of whom were quite able to reach it Wilson a regular at the back in his second season with Plymouth Argyle almost a decade on since his solitary cap for Wales Bolton did have five players away on their international duty last week Three of them with Northern Ireland. Declan John has been capped by Wales. He's uh, slotted into the side today on that left-hand side. Charles of Northern Ireland, now a goal scorer for his country, forcing the early Bolton corner. And their top scorer hoping to come to the party today. 18 goals for the club in the current campaign. Too short of becoming the first Bolton player since uh, Michael Ricketts to reach 20. Back in 2001. So another set piece to come then. Declan John with the corner. It's a deep delivery, it's a powerful header, and it's perfectly placed. Some start for Bolton Wanderers. Kyle Dempsey's got the opening goal in the final. It is the start that the Wanderers were dreaming of. Well, they've been working on such set-piece situations over the course of the last fortnight, and they reap their reward already. Declan John's delivery hoisted it high, and despite the packed penalty area, the posse of Plymouth players in there, they weren't able to react in time. Kyle Dempsey guides the header home.
Scorer of four goals for Ian Everts' side in League One this season. He opens his account in this competition. At the most opportune of moments. It is some start to this final. And if Bolton were nervous coming here, as Ian Everett admitted they must be, then that will certainly help settle those nerves in the best possible fashion. First goal since he scored the only goal against Cheltenham at the start of February. He hasn't actually started in the Papa John's Trophy since November's victory over Barrow in the group stages. Didn't feature in the semi-final success, but has stepped up to the big stage. And the early problems are for Plymouth and for Stephen Schumacher. Saw his side surrender top spot in uh, League One to Sheffield Wednesday yesterday, albeit only on uh, goal difference with a game in hand. Their priority is automatic promotion. Bolton hoping to make the playoffs. But searching already for a second goal here. It is one-way traffic in the early stages. Charles' effort is blocked behind for another Bolton corner. Plymouth haven't got going yet. And they will have to prove that lessons have been learned. Wasn't the most obvious of targets, maybe Dempsey, last time. Now they'll be aware of his threat. And he will challenge for this one and win it in the air again. Cleared away before it could come back to him a third time. Connor Bradley working it wider. Charles had the time to take it down. Ricardo had stayed forward. Kachunga was in there as well. Plymouth are rocking right now. They haven't perhaps adjusted yet to the big stage. 1-2 and lost two as a player at Wembley. Ian Everett leading out his team here for the first time. Kachunga offering up the option. Dempsey in there again, but this time dispossessed as Jay Matete comes under pressure. The January loan signing from Sunderland, able to clear that one away. But it's Dempsey's early goal that's the difference. The Plymouth players caught ball watching a little bit, maybe. But it was a fine header. Measured to perfection from Dempsey. He's in his second season at the club since joining in January of last year from Gillingham. He started the last 16 successive games in League One. He has been central to the early story at Wembley. First of 72 supporters coaches setting off from the University of Bolton Stadium at five o'clock this morning. It's those wondrous fans in the east side of the stadium celebrating early on. Early intervention for Josh Sheehan. He has been a regular in this competition. Sheehan rather less so in uh, League One. Started six of their seven games and came off the bench in the other one. Competition that began back at the end of August. Both of these two clubs topping their groups and progressing all the way through the knockout stages. One of the proudest days of his career, said Ricardo before the game, leading out the team at Wembley. Desperate that he will get the opportunity to lift the trophy at the end of it. And they come again with Kachunga. Dempsey in support. He's in again. He's unselfish. It's Charles. It's 2 0 Bolton Wanderers. 
2-0 already. And the top scorer was perfectly placed. They are daring to dream already. A swift counter-attacking second goal. And 19th of his Bolton season for the team's top scorer. And Plymouth just do not know what has hit them here. Caught in possession inside their own half initially. Dempsey played his part, certainly, as did Kachunga. Dempsey unselfish. Charles decisive. Wonderful goal from a Bolton perspective. Well, both of these teams suffered defeat on their last visit to the National Stadium. Bolton's came in an FA Cup semi-final loss against Stoke City. They were 3-0 down by half-time of that semi-final. A dozen years on, they are two goals to the good already. With a shade over ten minutes on the clock. Well, all those uh, pre-match preparations for Plymouth and for Stephen Schumacher. And they've been uh, ripped up, really. And they will have to uh, improvise from here. They will have to dig deep into reserves of resolve and resilience if they are to turn this around. The first priority for Plymouth is to try and find a foothold in this final, which has certainly eluded them so far. The last time they were here, Jordan Houghton was an unused substitute as a 20-year-old on loan from Chelsea when they lost that League Two playoff final by this current scoreline of two goals to nil against AFC Wimbledon. Houghton the only player involved in the matchday squad that day that is back again today. Having returned to the club a couple of seasons ago from MK Dons. He's hoping to use that experience of 2016. Experience lacking really in this Plymouth squad of occasions such as this. Joe Edwards is the captain in his fourth season. He missed only his second league game of the season last time out at uh, Accrington Stanley. A victory that had them top. Didn't have as many difficult decisions to make, said Schumacher, that he was expecting before the game because of some uh, late injuries that they've picked up. He himself was uh, left out of a playoff final. Left unused on the bench for Fleetwood Town. So he's been on the other end of some of the conversations that he was uh, having to have with his Plymouth squad, having utilised 30 different players in this competition en route to the final. They don't have an under-23 team anymore, so certainly the early group games were an opportunity for some of the highly rated academy prospects from the under-18s to play with some of the senior stars. The further they've gone, the less frequent their appearances in it. And there were over 12,000 at home park for the semi-final shootout success against Cheltenham. One of three penalty shootouts that they've been involved in in this competition already. They have been in uh, stickier spots than this. 3-0 down at half-time against AFC Wimbledon earlier in the knockout stages. Have they got any response here? Edwards, good run. Big block by the skipper. Ricardo was in the way. and working it wider. It was in the third round of the competition, that home game against AFC Wimbledon. They trailed 3-0 with less than half an hour of the game to go. Took it to a penalty shootout, thanks to a hat-trick in the space 
of just 15 minutes from Sam Cosgrove, who notably is back on their bench today, having missed the last four matches through injury. Player on loan from Birmingham City. Connor Bradley is used to the big stage with Liverpool. He's yet to make a league debut for them, but he has played five times for Liverpool's first team in cup competitions, the 12 times capped Northern Ireland international. Winning the most recent two of those caps at the start of their latest European Championship qualifying campaign. Along with Dion Charles, and uh, Owen Toyle was in that squad for the first time as well, didn't get on in either game. But the Bolton centre-back was given the number seven shirt previously worn for his country by George Best. So he came back, said Ian Everett with a big smile on his face. This is Matete for Plymouth. He's just taken away from him by Aaron Morley. Free kick given. Tete preferred to Matt Butcher in the heart of the Plymouth midfield. That was one of the tougher selection decisions, maybe, for Schumacher. Just a little late on Josh Sheehan there. A little later, judging by that particular angle, perhaps. There is Sheehan again, neat and tidy in possession. More promising this for Plymouth. Might open up really for them for the uh, the first time. It did, but Callum Wright couldn't make the most of it. Looked like he'd done the hard bit. Just found a little bit of space here. What he didn't find was the finish. The player who joined in January from Blackpool. Number of their January signings not eligible to play today. Saxon early and Tyrick Wright having featured in the competition for other clubs earlier in the campaign. Bolton in a, a similar situation. Rolling out the likes of uh, Dan and Lundeloup, Victor Adebayo today, and Shola Shoretire as well. Played for Manchester United in the group stages of the competition. As Charles, no way through this time. Sheehan certainly seeing plenty of it in the centre. Just sold the pass a little short. Barley Mumba wasn't quite able to make it count. He's on loan for the season from uh, Norwich City. Strengthening the squad, which just fell short of uh, the playoffs on the final day of uh, last season. And they've uh, responded by searching to the top of the table. And although they were dislodged by Sheffield Wednesday yesterday, they will perhaps see the Owls only picking up a point against Lincoln as a useful result in their promotion push. She's very much on the, the back burner this afternoon. Number again in the thick of things up against Kachunga. His last two goals for Bolton have both come in this competition, including in the semi-final win at Accrington, where they left it late, actually, in contrast to today. Played against 10 for much of that match after the... Early sending off midway through the first half of Accrington Stanley, Sean McConville, but it wasn't until Kachunga opened the scoring eight minutes from time that they were able to make their pressure pay. Aaron Morley scored a super second just a couple of minutes later. Here they go in search of a third in the final already. Charles was calling for it. Instead, it was Dempsey. It's deflected and scrambled away from right on the line. Just got back in time, did Edwards there.
And Callum Burton so grateful to gather. It was very close to being offside in the build-up. Goalkeeper just able to grab it. Suspicion potentially that it might have come off a hand in there. Burton has been one of the stars of the show for Plymouth en route to Wembley. The only one who hasn't missed a minute in this competition. Saved penalties in three different shootouts. Including three in a row against Cheltenham in the semi-final. A stop from Alfie May booking their place at Wembley. Even the prospect of penalties looking a long way off right now, given how this game has started. But we're still really in the early stages of the story. Had Bolton, though, been able to go on and score their third, as it appeared they might a moment ago. And that would have put a very different spin on things. They still have a comfortable cushion. Nothing built so swiftly on the early lead provided by Kyle Dempsey there. They look such a threat every time they surge forward. Bradley covering good ground. Still only 19. Huge prospect, Connor Bradley. Enhancing his reputation certainly over the course of the campaign. He scored in this competition in the 4 0 victory over Manchester United's under 21 side. Charles was the target for his strike partner, Kachunga. Forward by Edwards. Ryan Hardy working it wider for Callum Wright. Teases in the cross. Now Bradley's got some uh, defensive work to do, and he's done it wonderfully well. And comes clear of Bali Mumpa. Turning defence into attack. Bradley does have options ahead of him. And Kachunga got there first. Dempsey now takes over. Well, that's Kachunga having gone down, and Plymouth seemingly switching off for a second in the immediate aftermath of that. Teto was just deceived, really, by Dempsey's footwork. And then Kachunga caught. Well, he's been a regular substitute recently. Off the bench in six of their last seven league games after that three-match suspension that he served. Punch Brandon Cooper of Forest Green. Dion Charles was uh, wrongly sent off at the time. Kachunga understandably had to uh, serve the suspension instead. Hasn't really been able to get his starting spot back. Here's Dempsey. It's all Bolton at the moment. Kachunga was trying to find Declan John, who was in there. Just past the midway point of this first half, and Plymouth haven't really got started yet. That was James Trafford, who was on the England under-21 duty last week. Second season on loan from Manchester City. Joel Dixon, who began this competition as Bolton's goalkeeper. Trafford rested, but has now started the last four games. The sides fielded by Ian Everett have got stronger the longer that they've gone on. Although in fairness to Everett, he went on record very publicly as prioritising this competition as a route to glory this season. And they've been able to maintain their challenge whilst remaining in the thick of the playoff pack. This is Mumba, back over on this right-hand side. Jordan Houghton trying to combine with Danny Mayer. This is Houghton, it's in awkwardly on! Hardy just unable to finish it off. Having made the right run, 
and got on the end of the opportunity. He found the goalkeeper in the way. Certainly as close as Plymouth Argyle have come. The highly rated James Trafford do enough to concede Plymouth's first corner of the game. In by Houghton. Only partially clear, this is right. Houghton once more. Slight deflection on the cross, in fact, rather more than slight. Afforded Bolton the opportunity to clear to halfway. Where Charles will, first of all, try and make it stick and indeed try to turn goalwards. Valiant attempt to do so, despite being outnumbered in the circumstances. Of going longer this time, but it carries through to Trafford. Hardy very much the one that they are looking to to try and get them back in the game. And the top scorer last season as well as this one. The player who started his career in Glasgow with Rangers. Bolton appeals are waved away this time. Kachunga was claiming the free kick. James Wilson gets it back again. Big part of the Plymouth plan is Ryan Hardy in attack. Here's Mumba. Danny Mayer in support. Still with Mayer. Now Matete. Jay Matete makes himself available again. Wilson. More prolonged period of uh, Plymouth possession, this. Houghton at the heart of it. Matete again. Bolton with pretty much everybody back behind the ball here. All those in white currently residing inside their own half at Wembley. Mayer. Wilson was wider. Here's Mumba. Twisting and turning away from Toyle. Initially anyway, but not for long. And then Toll and Mumba come together. Plymouth appeal in the referee's direction. And Ben Toner says no penalty. Just for a moment, Barley Mumba was uh, in behind and looked like he got in front of Owen Toyle. And his presence was important and probably not quite enough in that for the penalty. Big shout, though, from a Plymouth side desperately searching for a route back into the game after the early damage done. That was held up well by Charles. Here's Kachunga. Dempsey through in on goal and can't quite score again when it opened up for him. Callum Burton with the save. Preserving Plymouth's hopes of... Uh, Getting back into this. Because 3-0 inside half an hour. And it might have been over for them before it had ever really begun. Game is wide open right now. Hardy not quite able to reach that. It was a huge chance, wasn't it, for Kyle Dempsey? And only time will tell whether it's one that he will look back on with real regret or not. But there is such an air of menace about Bolton every time that they advance into the final third. They've scored 21 times now in this competition already this season.
And Charles, the target for the longer ball. Wilson got his head to it. It was Aaron Morley who picked up the pieces initially. Charles who goes down. Another side from Devon can uh, ill afford another concession in this first half. They are just beginning to create chances of their own, but they continue to look vulnerable, don't they, at the other end? Ian at the bottom boss insisted it would likely be the, the tightest of finals, this two closely matched teams. Finished goalless, actually, when they last met at the University of Bolton Stadium back in January. He thought this would be decided on the, the fine margins on the major moments. But his side stretching clear and might have been even further clear by now. Again, it was excellent defending from Bradley who got back. <laughs> Kathleen Jones, one of the longest serving players under Ian Everett. Was actually one of Everett's first signings in the summer of 2020. Joined on a free from Carlisle United. Facing a former club today, he played six times for Plymouth on loan in League Two back in 2015, having started his career in the Everton Academy. One of many that have spoken before the game about fulfilling a lifelong ambition of playing at Wembley. Here goes Dempsey again. Those runs causing Plymouth all sorts of issues. Dion Charles got underneath that one. He wasn't able to replicate the composure of earlier. Albeit from much further out this time. Dempsey cutting it back to him as the two Bolton goal scorers combined in search of a third. He has been some signing since he arrived over a year ago from Accrington Stanley. Dion Charles. Confidence uh, buoyed further by well, those first two goals in the colours of Northern Ireland. For whom he now has uh, 15 caps for his country. He'll go off in pursuit of this as well and put the pressure on Dan Scar. He generated decent distance with the acrobatic clearance. Oh, what a job as well that Stephen Schumacher has done since uh, succeeding Ryan Lowe, under whom he worked as an assistant, as the Plymouth manager. At the end of 2021, even by Lowe's own admission, Schumacher has taken them to the next level. There's Ryan Hardy. Stopped in his tracks by Jones. Touch for Mumba. And now Mayer. Decision goes against Dion Charles. He had looked second favourite when setting off in pursuit of that. Scar just got there ahead of him, which enabled him to win the free kick, despite the fact there wasn't an awful lot by way of contact in what followed. No surprise, though, that Dion Charles has been central to the story so far, given the season that he's had. a real contrast really in the way that the 
two managers approach this. Schumacher's mantra was that he wanted to keep things as uh, normal as possible in the build-up, so Plymouth actually trained yesterday morning back home. Didn't arrive in London until uh, late afternoon yesterday. Didn't come to the stadium until match day. In contrast, Bolton travelled on Friday. They used Brentford's training facilities in the build-up to the game. And were given a tour of the Wembley dressing rooms and the pitch yesterday to try and get their bearings. They used the long spell without a match to get one or two players re-energised again. They did play a behind closed doors friendly. 3-1 win against Rotherham last weekend as part of the preparations. Ian Effort didn't want to go quite so long without some form of game. For Plymouth, it was uh, an inter-squad training match instead that served a similar purpose. Yesterday's visit here was also a chance, says Everett, for the Bolton players to... Uh, do the tourist bit, really, to take their selfies because he's banned their mobile phones today until after the game, wanting full focus only on the football. The friends and family can savour the scenes in the stands, but for the players, until the work is done, it is uh, all about taking care of business, and they've started wonderfully well. Twice as many shots so far for Bolton Wanderers. And those two early goals doing the damage. Four of the six on target to just the one at the other end. Plymouth still really searching for a consistent spell of pressure that they've not yet been able to apply. Wilson advancing. Has Mumba outside of him. Barley Mumba. Delivers the cross, comfortable for Trafford. Collects it calmly. Eighteen clean sheets in League One so far this season for James Trafford. Mike Plymouth, Bolton remain very much part of the promotion picture. Very tight in the race for the playoffs. Concern here over Kachunga, who stayed down. Schumacher's side level at the summit of League One with Sheffield Wednesday on 80 points, having played a game less, but only two clear of Ipswich in third. Barnsley a further three points back. Now 16 points better off than Bolton in fifth, who have uh, Peterborough in sixth and Derby in seventh level on points with them. Eight more games to go for both of these sides. But that can wait. Just a couple of minutes on the clock when Carl Dempsey gave Bolton Wanderers the lead. And it wasn't too much longer, was it? When that advantage was doubled by Dion Charles. Six minutes between the two goals. Relatively comfortable cushion for Ian Everett at the moment, who admitted the semi-final against Accrington was the most nervous that he had ever been in his career, knowing how much that match meant and the possible trip to Wembley today, to the club and to the town. And his team made him wait on that occasion. All smiles for those uh, Bolton supporters so far. Some uh, may be rather more prominent than others. But it was a town, really, that collectively stood behind their football club when it did appear at one stage less than four years ago that there would no longer be a football club in Bolton. That's how close they came to going out of business. And they did drop into the, the basement. The club that Sam Allardyce had kept so successfully in the top flight of English football for so long. He too in attendance today, as was uh, Ivan Campo, one of his players during those heady Premier League days that we saw a moment ago. Team under a little bit of pressure here, but not for long as Trafford comes and collects. 
He does have that calm assurance at the back, doesn't he, belying his tender years at the age of 20. Well, that was late. Acknowledged immediately by Danny Mayer. I don't think it's going to spare him the first caution of this final. Referee Ben Toner. Hails from Blackburn, actually, but Bolton have a wonderful record when he's uh, been in charge of their matches. They've never lost one yet. And the name of uh, Plymouth's number 10 is the first taken today. And I don't think he can have uh, too many complaints, really. Danny Mayer. I worked with Stephen Schumacher and uh, indeed the former manager Ryan Lowe at their previous club, Berry. Late on Josh Sheehan. It's not the first time, actually, that Sheehan has been on the receiving end this afternoon. Confirmation of the caution for Mayer as we head into the final five of the first half. Have to watch his step from here. Trafford will take the resulting free kick. Bolton on course to make some more memories at Wembley this afternoon. We've had some famous one down the years, including the very first one. What was then the Imperial Stadium a century ago in the White Horse final. On the wrong end, weren't they, of the famous Matthews final in 1953 at Wembley, that 4-3 defeat to Blackpool. And they beat Manchester United in 1958, just months actually after the, the Munich air disaster, Nat Lofthouse scored a couple of goals that day. And they've won and lost playoff finals here as well. And their most recent cup final in the 2004, the League Cup was played in Cardiff. They made themselves right at home at Wembley in the opening exchanges today. And as yet, Plymouth haven't been able to undo that damage. Joe Edwards linking with Gillespie this is Callum Wright Edwards again do you have plenty forward here Plymouth what a difference a goal back at this juncture would make there were a couple waiting in the penalty area of course didn't get that far but they do get the corner kick conceded by Connor Bradley Bolton side who haven't actually won any of their last four league games. They were impressive in the, the last one, albeit over a fortnight ago in the one-all draw at Sheffield Wednesday. Performance that Ian Everett felt was much more like his team. How they've responded here, but work to do in defending this corner kick. Maybe not as much work as there might have been, though. It was a pretty comfortable take for Trafford, who wasn't really put under pressure. And they came in too close to him. And Schumacher's side have been on the wrong end of margins such as that. Bolton scoring the opening goal so early from a corner kick. There's Wilson. He goes long. Schumacher will be desperate, I'm sure, to get his team in the dressing room at half-time and try and address the situation, try and provoke a turnaround for Plymouth not quite shown enough yet since the early concessions to suggest that that is likely what both bosses will be desperate to avoid today though is the sense of regret 
that they might have been able to offer more. Plymouth have played some vibrant attacking football all season to take their place at the summit of League One. Mixing it and some with teams that have much bigger budgets than theirs. Today will not define their season. And that will come down to the remaining eight more cup finals, as Stephen Schumacher has described them. As indeed, to an extent, it will for Bolton and Ian Everett in their push for the playoffs as well. They hope that this won't be their last visit to Wembley this season. Plenty of others in reserve, hoping to play a part later. Four added minutes confirmed at the end of the first 45. Danny Mayer. Mumba well advanced again. But running out of room. It was adamant actually Stephen Schumacher that the wide open pitch at Wembley, as it's often described, is uh, not really any bigger than that at home park. Trying to insist to his players that they wouldn't need to adapt their game in that respect. But it's the stage that surrounds it. It's the global spotlight that they're under today that is maybe that little bit different. They have been seeking advice as they force the corner kick here of Plymouth, the director of football, Neil, uh, Neil Chusnip. He used to work at the Football Association. He's been tapping up the England assistant, Steve Holland, a couple of weeks ago for what to expect when playing here. Plymouth insisting they are as prepared as they could be. And if they can earn some reward from this corner kick in first half added time, then it would change the narrative entirely. And it goes from Houghton. Ricardo rising highest to glance it clear. And again. As far as Houghton once more with a, a hit and hope, really. Throw was taken quickly by Callum Wright, who will get the ball back from Bali Mumba and now brings Matete into it. Plenty have stayed forward for Plymouth, but they're not going to be required. Their presence ultimately academic by what followed. And this side haven't quite had that quality in the first half. Quality that he knows they are capable of providing. That will only further fuel the frustration that he hasn't seen it yet when it matters most. Just the one notable save that James Trafford really has had to make in this first half. Forward by Edwards, he will get it back again. Now Mayer. Last minute of the four added on. Won't necessarily be a huge surprise to see Plymouth changes at half time, given how this has gone. Wilson trying to evade the attentions of Charles. Mumba's done well. This is Wright. Wilson able to fizz it in towards Ryan Hardy. Bolton will certainly settle for that, and it's probably the last scare that they will have to survive in this first half. A team that have won four of their last five league games. They've lost only two of nine. Two behind uh, Wembley. And we expect referee Toner's whistle once James Trafford is able to clear this away. 
what has been a relatively routine first half for the Bolton goalkeeper. Wanderers off to a superstar when Kyle Dempsey headed them in front just four minutes into the match. And Plymouth hadn't really recovered their composure by the time Dion Charles doubled that lead just ten minutes into the game. Little really by way of a response from Plymouth in the remainder of the first half that followed. That will have to change because it's going Wanderers' way at Wembley so far. Half-time in the Papa John's Trophy final. It is Bolton Wanderers 2, Plymouth Argyle 0. Welcome back. Half-time and a double change for Plymouth Argyle before we get the second period of the Papa John's Trophy final underway. Matt Butcher and Sam Cosgrove are being called for at the interval by Stephen Schumacher, who has sent his Plymouth side out in good time. Ahead of this second period, the damage so far being done early. Two Bolton goals scored in the first ten minutes of the match. We're hearing it will be Jay Matete and Danny Mayer, who was at yellow carded late in the half, to uh, make way as part of these changes. Cosgrove in particular has previous in this competition. Plymouth have been in a stickier spot before. They were 3-0 down at half-time in the third round, just four days before Christmas, against AFC Wimbledon. And Cosgrove scored a hat-trick in the space of 15 second-half minutes to take that tie to penalties and preserve their participation in the competition, which has taken them all the way to Wembley. But it is uh, Bolton Wanderers who are just 45 minutes from glory now after they made such a super start to this final. Carl Dempsey opening the scoring just four minutes into the match and then playing his part in providing the opportunity for Dion Charles to double the lead. So confirmation of those Plymouth changes. There's no great surprise, is it, to see Schumacher switch it up at this stage. Butcher and Cosgrove for Matete and Mayer. Cosgrove only just on his way back from injury. Having missed the last four matches, he was in something of a race against time to be fit to feature today. But he will play the second half of the final, having been sidelined recently with a calf injury. He's on loan for the season from uh, Birmingham City. So it's Plymouth Argyle who get the second half started. It is Plymouth Argyle who have it all to do. Two behind at Wembley. Colton with the trophy in their sights after the super start that they had to this final. More of the same, I'm sure, the message from Ian Everett. They may well have had more goals in that first half as well. Further opportunities were created. Plymouth with just the one major moment of note. One save that James Trafford was forced into with his legs to keep out Ryan Hardy. That aside, there wasn't too much end product despite some Plymouth pressure. And it is that which Schumacher has set about attempting to address with the changes that he's made, and I'm sure with the words that he's spoken in the dressing room as well. Said he was like a kid at Christmas waiting for this final to come around. Must have felt like Santa hadn't turned up, given the way that the game had started. But there is still time to salvage it. What they can ill afford to do is concede again at the start of the second half. Having done so from a set-piece very early in the match. We've got another one here for the challenge on Connor Bradley, just hauled back from behind, really, by Callum Wright. He had a handful of his shirt. Here is the, uh, the free kick, and they've tried something a little bit different actually down the line for Connor Bradley to have a go. And it's blocked away, and the whistle is gone. The innovation not quite rewarded on that occasion. And we've had the official attendance at Wembley today confirmed, and look at that over 79,000 at the National Stadium for this. Biggest crowd anywhere in Europe this weekend. Remarkable support for these two sides. Desperate to make some memories. Of 
Well, they won it well. And wasn't content to stop there either. Plays the pass and gets it back again. Ricardo Santos, the skipper. Here's Josh Sheehan to uh, Gethin Jones. And now Bradley. Wonderful advert for the competition for League One football. Between these two clubs who've had super seasons so far. And who haven't yet achieved what they set out to do. It remains at the moment an opportunity. A little nervy from Trafford that time. We haven't really said that before today, but it opens up here for Kachunga. In on goal and finds the finish to make it three. Bolton Wanderers well on their way at Wembley, surely now. Kachunga with the goal. Bolton score early in the second half, just as they did in the first. His first goal since the semi-final. Has Bolton on the verge of being Wembley winners. Well, he had time to think about it, didn't he? Such was the position that he found himself in. And is there any way back now for Stephen Schumacher's side? It's not the first time they've been 3 0 down in this competition this season. But they were left wide open here. Scar couldn't get back. There was little that Burton in goal could do. As Kachunga picked his spot, he had plenty of time to settle himself, to make up his mind. Just a little glance at goal and strokes it home. He hasn't scored in League One this season. But it's his third goal in this competition. The Bolton Wanderers are on the verge of winning for the first time in 34 years. 4-1 it finished against Torquay in 1989. In a previous incarnation of this competition, it's the only previous time that Bolton Wanderers have won it. And it would appear that that statistic is set to change today. Plymouth in their first ever final have never really got going. They have to find something soon in response. Matt Butcher, who was brought on at half time, finds Edwards. Gillespie. There's Dion Charles. There might be more in this for Bolton yet. Dempsey almost getting on the end of that. Charles having attempted to ride the challenge. It won't spare Dan Scar the yellow card. Just left his leg in, got nowhere near the ball. Second caution of the game is for the Argyle centre-back. Charles will be in the mood for more. He is just that one goal away from the 20 goal target that he set himself at the start of the season. But he already achieved when factoring in the two goals for Northern Ireland last week. Still Bolton committing plenty forward. Would be the most uh, timely of returns to winning ways for Wanderers. They've drawn two and lost two of their previous four matches since the victory against Port Vale at home in late February. Despite that run, Ian Everett's team remain positioned in the playoffs and are closing in on cup success. Whoever prevails today will be hoping it is only the first part of a double this year. Aaron Morley waiting to take the free kick that will follow on this occasion. He was voted as the player of the round in the semi-finals. That wonderful goal that he scored to settle the issue at Accrington in the semis. They certainly had to bide their time in that game. It's been a very different story at the National Stadium today. Having made those two half-time changes, further alterations appear to be on the way.
for Plymouth Argyle. Not until after they face this free kick, though. Headed away by Jordan Houghton. Hardy will try and give chase. But it was always a, a lonely and less likely task for him to put any sort of pressure on the goalkeeper. Bradley goes longer. Dempsey, who was integral to the start that they made. He started the second half in exactly the same fashion. Edwards hoists it high. And well by Ricardo Santos. Kachunga might open up again here with Charles chasing, and the goalkeeper did well, actually. Callum Burton reacted quickly. And just got there first, ahead of Bolton's number 10. None of the match in the semi-final success against Cheltenham. It's a competition that Callum Burton began as first choice in. And it was his only chance, really, of game time this season, given the form of Michael Cooper. He was injured in February, ruled out with a knee injury for the rest of the campaign, so Burton is the number one in League One as well. As Plymouth make this change, Finazaz is on for... Callum Wright in the midfield, as who is on loan from Aston Villa, the Republic of Ireland under-21 international. He'd started actually the last eight games in uh, League One and scored seven times this season. And has only begun one game in this Papa John's trophy this campaign, but he is on for the conclusion. Wright, another who was operating really only on the periphery not alone amongst the Argyle players in that respect but they have shown real character in resilience all season long they need to summon that and some at Wembley today Hardy giving chase here makes it his the odds were against him as they are his team waiting to take the throw. As that came short for his first involvement. Has he got the free kick he was uh, perhaps hoping for? Wilson got a foot in though. For that Plymouth frustration here. And Charles is down. Wilson will argue he was doing no more than standing his ground. That battle between the two of them continues. It's one that Dion Charles has had the better of so far. Beaten 5-0 on their last visit to Wembley in that semi-final against Stoke City in 2011. Very different story here. As Plymouth go in search of an unlikely route back into the game. Joe Edwards winning the corner. They've had very little to shout about so far in the west side of the stadium. Those that have made the pilgrimage from Devon. And indeed from much further afield. Supporters all the way from uh, Japan in that Plymouth end today. The corner from Houghton comes in. Not one that they can profit from. Has been one of the many differences underlined so far in this final. And he's still learning in the managerial game by his uh, own admission. He's had great success so far. And Stephen Schumacher, 75 games in the job before today, 42 of those won. And an FA Youth Cup as a player in the same side as Wayne Rooney. And have done well to win it back here. This is Hardy. Helps it on. It didn't quite come for Butcher. Dempsey back in the way. Forward by Wilson. Joe Edwards. This is Macaulay Gillespie. 
Bit better this from Plymouth. There must be a game. Not by Ricardo, but much more height than there was distance on his clearance, although the decision has gone against Gillespie, the centre-back. Recently signed a new contract in January to extend his stay with Plymouth Argyle. He's in his second season. Since joining from the Australian side, Brisbane Raw. He started his career in the youth ranks at Newcastle United. So many of this Plymouth side beginning in uh, big clubs' academies, and having to drop down the divisions to start their professional careers, really, to start playing regular first-team football. They've come together as a collective this season in super style under Schumacher. It's not gone their way today. Here's Charles, so strong. Wilson stood his ground with very little margin for error up against Dion Charles there in that part of the pitch. Just about did enough, and then he got to the ball. With Wilson at the expense of the corner. Morley to take it. Jones and Ricardo up from the back. Fizzed in with a little bit of power, returned dangerously as well. That could have deflected anywhere. It will come back to Aaron Morley to try again. And uh, loops it up and over. Ultimately unthreatening from Morley this time. Almost an hour in. He was speaking before the game, Schumacher, about how he had visualised everything that might happen today, how he'd pictured himself leading the team out and then celebrating in front of the fans at the end of the game, making the steps up to the Royal Box. But not really in his worst nightmares would he have envisaged a situation like this at this stage, I'm sure. There's Jones. Long by Ricardo. Return straight back to him to have another go. The Portuguese centre back. Chase on here. And there's for Connor Bradley. Just couldn't quite force a way through. But they will come again with Sheehan. Plenty of options for him. There's Morley. Wider is Declan John. by Morley, touch from uh, Kachunga to Charles, still with Dion Charles, not quite, Bradley was calling for it in space as well, Charles only had one thought on his mind and understandably so. They have Plymouth where they want them right now. Showcase their threat from these sort of situations already. And by Morley, but the whistle had gone. Almost at the point that he struck the ball, so he will get another go. It's Kachunga, who's down. Scorer of the third goal. And has earned them even further breathing space. There was a little shove there, wasn't there? Sam Cosgrove, it was. And Morley will try again from the corner, it's a good one, it's four. It's all going Wanderers' way. 4-0 at Wembley. And surely now, only a matter of how many. Perfectly positioned to steer home the header. Again, it comes from the corner, just as the opening goal did today. Gethin Jones this time. Is on the end of it to take the acclaim, to pile on the punishment for Plymouth. What a season that Argyle have been having as they push for promotion, but the wheels have come off at Wembley.
Again, they did not deal with the corner. And Gethin Jones got in front of the two Plymouth players who were attempting to prevent him from reaching that. Didn't get near him. The one-time Argyle Loney making a wonderful Wembley memory for himself and his side. And surely settling the outcome of this final beyond any doubt now. Surely beyond their dreams. But it could be this many at this stage against a the team they trail by 16 points in League One. It's Bolton Wanderers who've risen to the big occasion. It's Plymouth who search for something by way of response. Hardy may only be a token gesture should they be able to find it from here. Charge on for Bradley. And the assistance flag prevents Plymouth from suffering potential further damage. You do wonder, given the nature of what is unfolding here, whether there will be psychological damage for the eight more cup finals that they have to come in pursuit of promotion in League One. They sold over 38,000 tickets for this. Not all of them will be there at the finish. Only a third ever visit to Wembley. In the 137-year history of the club, rapidly turning out to be one to forget. Gillespie's cross is cleared only as far as Jordan Houghton. Bali Mumpa. Will come for Edwards, he's got a couple in the middle. Number again. Sheehan will let it go. And it has got away for Plymouth. Brendan Galloway being readied. Such a difficult situation for any substitute to come into, though, with this scoreline at this stage. First cup final success for Bolton since they last won this one in 1989. Almost certainly secured now, barring something uh, that would go down in history. Changes at the back, Galloway. He did start the semi-final. He's had a, an injury-interrupted season. He's on for Gillespie. He's only played once in the league since December. He's the former Everton man. will be in the days and weeks to come a, a big test for Stephen Schumacher's side to try and recover from this they have to separate it from their promotion aspirations but it's uh, sometimes easier said than done given all the emotion invested into the build-up to a showpiece like this for it to fall so flat so quickly and in complete contrast, it might just be the push that Bolton's playoff ambitions will benefit from. Generate the momentum that by Schumacher's own admission in the pre-match build-up, when Bolton get on a roll, when they generate momentum, they can be so difficult to stop. How he has been proved that so right today. And the Wanderers will hope that that mantra remains true for the rest of the season in a slightly wider context. to see it through with a clean sheet will Bolton there's Dempsey who started the scoring has continued his run they've kept 22 clean sheets in all competitions this season and only one in the last five matches best defensive record at home in league one this season only allowing 11 and they've seemingly transferred that sort of Mindset to Wembley. Trip of uh, over 200 miles. Both sets of supporters have had uh, lengthy visits to get to the National Stadium. It's those that will be 
heading back north. It will be celebrating, surely. I can say that with relative certainty, even though we still have a quarter of the game to go. this final during his playing days with uh, Chesterfield and Ian Everett his uh, assistant actually the first team coach Sam Hurd was uh, in that same side that were beaten by Peter Brett and Hurd did win it with Doncaster Rovers in 2007 although he didn't feature in the final the options here for our guy powerful effort but it's the wrong side of the netting from Ryan Hardy Ronnie Morge is a club ambassador these days, but his winning goal in the 1996 Division Three playoff final victory over Darlington remains the only goal that Plymouth have ever scored at Wembley. And even if that were to change today, then because of the context, it wouldn't matter quite so much as a winning goal that earned promotion. Morge was the first to say he is desperate to have some company in the record books. He'll always be the, the first player to score for Plymouth at Wembley. But he was desperate for somebody else to do so today. Instead, it is turning out to be Bolton Wanderers Day and the latest step in the recovery for a football club that were on the brink of extinction less than four years ago. Sharon Britton, the chairman, playing such a big part in the transformation of their fortunes under the Football Ventures Consortium that bought the club in 2019. Couldn't prevent them dropping into the bottom division, but here they are. Almost certainly as Wembley winners and thwarted a potential fifth goal by the offside flag. Which had gone up long before Dion Charles sent this goal Woodson over. He was trying to hold his run, wasn't he? It was close. He will be desperate to get another one though, Charles, and to reach that 20 goal mark for the season. No better place to do it than Wembley. 22 years since uh, Michael Ricketts was the last Bolton player to score that many in a single season for them. Last 20 minutes of the game here. This is Bradley. Didn't quite come for Kachunga. Galloway strides clear. Finazaz. Back to Galloway as the substitutes combine and again. As has once more, and still it might come for the shot, which was uh, just deflected off the boot of Butcher. He struck it with plenty of power. And it, to an extent, sums up the story for Schumacher's side. There's a bit more menace about them in this particular attack, though. Corner kick to come. Will be taken by Houghton. That has been the difference, really. Bolton scoring twice from corners. Plymouth not really threatening from their own. That's well worked. Here's Hardy trying to cut it back towards Cosgrove. Ali Mumba, he covered good ground, he's continued his run, he will get there, there's nobody on the end of it though for Plymouth. He's touched away from Gethin Jones, an important contribution in his own penalty area, not long after the one that he made at the other end. For further changes here, that's going to be Barley Mumba's last involvement actually, he's coming off to be replaced for Plymouth by Mikkel Miller. He wasn't expected to feature in this final because of injuries, missed most of the campaign actually on the sidelines, but he did win this competition here at Wembley last season with Rotherham. He was in their starting lineup as they overcame Sutton United in extra time. Very different circumstances as he comes on today. And Bolton are going to make a double change of their own. 
to experienced campaigners to come on and help them over the line. And Cameron Jerome and Kieran Lee. The applause, though, is for Dion Charles. He won't quite reach 20 for the season, but he has reached 19 for the season today. And it was his goal just 10 minutes into the match that put Bolton two up. And they've rarely looked back since then. He'll be replaced by the January signing, Cameron Jerome, a League Cup winner with Birmingham City a dozen years ago. Joined at the end of January from Luton on an 18-month contract. Come on for Charles. And the man who started the scoring is also making way. Carl Dempsey replaced by Kieran Lee. He knows what it's like to uh, taste defeat at Wembley. He lost the championship playoff final with Sheffield Wednesday in 2016. He's been a regular for Bolton through much of this season and will play his part in the closing stages. Jerome straight into the action, threads it forward for Kachunga. Across came Wilson to stop him. Kachunga's gone down very heavily. And he's just taken off one centre forward. And they now have an injury issue to another. Awkward one for Wilson, who came careering across and looking at that, didn't get the ball. And did get Elias Kachunga. Another of the goal scorers today. There really was no way back for Plymouth once Kachunga made it 3 0 just four minutes into this second half. Been a difficult season for him. The way that he's dealt with it has earned praise from his coach Ian Effort, and he's had his reward at Wembley today. Senior international with the Democratic Republic of Congo, having played for Germany up to under-21 level, having played in the Premier League, of course, with Huddersfield Town. Scorer at Accrington in the semi-final against Barrow in the second round of the competition as well, back in December. Certainly played his part in this final. And we'll hope for the opportunity to continue doing so, despite the initial concern surrounding his fitness. The nerves might just be easing a little bit by now for Ian Everett on the sidelines. And here come his team once more. And he couldn't find the finish this time, Kachunga. Again, he had a little bit of time to think about it. Further problems for Plymouth, and it really might have been more this afternoon. Four goals, but further opportunities for those in white. Just didn't catch that one cleanly at all, Kachunga. Almost twice as many shots at goal from Ian Everett's side. And Plymouth still with just that one effort on target in the entirety of the contest. Half of Bolton's have troubled the target. Four of them have gone in. Which has made this a much more relaxing afternoon than uh, I'm sure many of the travelling Bolton supporters would have been anticipating today, more than he would have been anticipating. There's nothing between them when they last met in Bolton in January in that goalless draw. They've only met five times actually since 1993, including the two league meetings this season. Plymouth winning four of the last five. Here's Morley. Well, the roles have been uh, reversed on the big stage today. And it goes again, Kachunga stretching. Didn't quite reach it as intended. Nearly, but not quite. He was only a fraction away from getting his toe to that. Last season was the first time that they crossed paths in the league since 1993.
Well, today, Bolton haven't scored in their previous five matches against Plymouth. Every chance they could finish with five today, given the way this is going. All he's called out. I know the problems that they've caused already in these sort of situations. Declan John gets it back again here. Plymouth making hard work of getting it clear. Difficult job to keep their heads up in the circumstances. To an extent, they will be wanting to turn attentions to Good Friday and a trip to Morecambe, which is of also huge significance in the context of their season. Very different pomp and circumstance surrounding it, certainly. But a huge game for them nonetheless. Tightest of races for automatic promotion. Bolton will resume their battle for the playoffs with a visit to Exeter City on the same day. Just a double header, always of uh, such importance. With so much in the season still at stake. It's a good run by Miller. He has support here from Galloway, who provides the cross. It's out by Ricardo. And Trafford wasn't required, I think he knew at the last moment that he wouldn't be required as Joe Edwards' effort whistled wide. Brought it down on the chest, they invited really to, uh, to have a hit, but not quite with the conviction that was needed, and that conviction has been lacking for much of the afternoon. For Plymouth Argyle. Something of a chastening experience for those in grey and indeed the Green Army watching on the west side of the stadium. A couple of Bolton changes being readied by Ian Everett. Giving game time now to as many as possible, really. So they could say that they played their part. They were on the pitch when they won at Wembley. Launch long by Ricardo Santos. The flick was by Kachunga. Didn't quite carry as far as he was hoping it would. And that will afford them the opportunity to make these changes timely return from injury just in time for the final for MJ Williams he's been out since January he's going to come on so too is George Thomason these changes in midfield Molly and Sheehan making way to a wonderful reception Influential early on, wasn't he, Sheehan, in setting the tempo, really. This part is played. Thomason will take his place in his second appearance in the Papa John's Trophy this season, having started the opening game against Crewe back at the end of August. Morley making way as well for MJ Williams. Some minutes in that behind closed doors game against Rotherham and indeed a recent B team contest to prove his fitness just in time for today. Been out with a knee problem since uh, January. are play they can enjoy what will follow four goals so far for Bolton in the final just as there was against opposition from Devon in 1989 that win against Torquay United a long wait to replicate such scenes and win another cup final Plymouth never previously beyond the semi-finals of this competition 
They reached back in 2015. They've gone out in the group stages in six straight years since the current format came in in 2016. All they have achieved in getting here and positioning themselves at the summit of League One will not be forgotten by what has happened today. But that will not dilute the disappointment that they will feel this evening. Last Bolton change coming up. George Johnston is another who hasn't played since January and will come on in place of Owen Toll at the back very shortly. So the word we're getting from the touchline. And the clearance had been completed just before the challenge came in, which is why Ben Toner has had to step in here. And he is uh, getting his card out again for Cosgrove this time. Not really been able to get into the game, has he, since he came on at half-time. It uh, was nasty and very late. Maybe something of a leaving present for Owen Toyle from the game just before he was about to come off anyway. The expression tells the story of Argyle's afternoon. Particularly unhappy given that he was about to take him off. Certainly, clearly unhappy with a challenge from Cosgrove. Well, they did lose 5 1 in the FA Cup back in November at uh, Grimsby Town. This has uh, matched their biggest defeat of the season if it stays like this for Plymouth. So beaten 5-1 at Charlton back in August. And given the circumstances today, given the wider nature of the spotlight, it is even tougher to take, I'm sure. But if there is a significant injury to Owen Toll here at this late stage of the game, it would just to provide a, a sour little footnote to Bolton's own afternoon given the importance of the game still to come between now and the end of the season, and his importance to this team. Again, if we had have had VAR in operation, there's a possibility that yellow might have become a red for Cosgrove. The change that they were about to make will surely happen anyway. Good to see Toll back on his feet again, at least. Looks a little more positive, doesn't it? George Johnston will come on in his place. The free transfer signing from Feyenoord a couple of seasons ago. He's missed the last nine league matches with that injury suffered against Charlton. From the Scottish under-21 international will take the place of Toll for these closing minutes and his way back to full fitness it's the fifth and final change for Bolton we'll wait for further news a little later down the line on the fitness of Toll. That little period of treatment will ensure a bit more added time at the end of the game. A bit more punishment, really, for Plymouth to have to withstand. Because for some time, really, I think they have uh, wanted the whistle here. Never got into the game at any stage. Come here for Hardy. He did have that one chance at 2 0 down in the first half. That's their only what if moment, really, had he been able to score in half the deficit heading towards half time. 
may well have changed the narrative. No way back for Plymouth after conceding again so soon into the second half. Asking Kachunga to chase it. Cameron Jerome is lurking with intent as well, just guarded back by Scar for Burton to clear. No chance really for the goalkeeper to provide any more heroics in this competition as he has done frequently en route to Wembley, Callum Burton. Enhancing his own reputation. Another match in the semi-final. Successive clean sheets either side of becoming a dad just a few weeks ago. It's been a hectic spell, not just in his career but in his life as well. Dreaming of uh, capping it all off with a win at Wembley. And that's never looked likely for Plymouth today. it's been in uh, Ian Everts managerial career so far the role he says that's changed his uh, approach to life he's been through some dark days that has emerged with renewed motivation as a manager there's nobody hungrier to succeed in this game he says than himself and his reputation is being uh, rapidly enhanced and that will only continue after the nature of today's performance who guided Barrow back into the Football League for the first time in 48 years before taking the Bolton job. Taking them to promotion out of the basement division. Heading back to where they want to be. Towards where they once were. Here's Butcher for Plymouth. They try and pick a way through. In by Miller. Jones kept his composure. Last minute of the 90. Bradley here is the furthest forward to give chase. Only just got enough on that. Did Scar required some assistance from Burton in dealing with the danger. And Plymouth haven't really dealt with the danger at all today. Leaving the Green Army dejected and disappointed. Well, I'm sure they will regroup and go again for the rest of the season in pursuit of promotion. He never the first to say that he hopes Plymouth will go up automatically this year. With his own team pressing for the playoffs. Hoping to be back here at Wembley in May. Four more minutes today before they can really start the celebrations, before they can get their hands on the silverware. Here's Bradley. Shifted infield by Thomason to Williams, the substitutes combining. And Jay Williams once more. We'll see who started the scoring. Eager to start the celebrations as well, I'm sure. And I believe as the player of the match today. It was certainly integral in the way that they started. Bolton putting themselves in a position from which Plymouth have never been able to get back to them. Jordan Houghton was always just stretching for that. Quite some scene, the east side of Wembley Stadium. Bolton announcing to the footballing world, really, that they are on the way back. Confirmation of that award for Kyle Dempsey today as player of the match. Butcher helps it on, it comes straight back again. Neatly really summing up the story for Chunga, for Bolton. Dom 
dominant display throughout the game. They are savouring really these final moments in stoppage time. They're toying with Plymouth as they have for large spells of the game. Not necessarily the match that many were expecting. Will come again. Looking for the fifth to equal the margin of victory against both MK Doms and Peter Brin's successive matches in February. They've only won twice actually since then before today. They have scored five goals three times this season. It won't be too much of a disappointment if uh, they are unable to make that four, despite the opportunities that they have had to do so. They were desperate, really, to hear the full-time whistle. They've chased shadows in the Wembley sunshine for long spells of the afternoon. They've never got close enough to Bolton Wanderers. As the full-time whistle goes at Wembley, Bolton Wanderers winners making memories on the way back towards the big time. They pick up the Papa John's trophy in super style today. Scoring early at the start of the first half and at the start of the second half. And there was no way back for Plymouth Argyle. That is a long way back towards the top for Bolton, where they have uh, proudly perched for long spells of their illustrious history. But this is a, another notable symbolic chapter as they attempt to recover from the dark days of despair, which almost saw the club go out of existence entirely. Now they're back as Wembley winners with a dominant display against a Plymouth Argyle side who came here hoping to win a first cup final in their history, visiting Wembley for only a third time, and who were beaten really in the early stages of the game. He was integral to that, he was a big reason why that was the case. Kyle Dempsey scoring the opener just four minutes into the match and very shortly afterwards making a second for Dion Charles as Ian Everts' team took complete command. It was 3-0 just four minutes into the second half when Kachunga really put the game beyond Argyle's reach. And Gethin Jones, one of the longest-serving players here, who was one of Ian Everts' first signings for the club back in 2020, had the final say as it proved in the scoring. Again, as with the first goal, it came from a corner kick. And Everts' team stood strong at the other end to clinch the clean sheet to go with their goal-laden display to both reward and inspire a generation of support. Over 30,000 that had made the trip from Bolton today to be with them at Wembley to savour these scenes. Pain for Plymouth today. Attention will return to their promotion push they have. What Stephen Schumacher has described as eight more cup finals to come as they strive for the championship. Bolton will resume their push for the playoffs and hope that they will be back at Wembley in front of these fans again before the season is out. Much more for both clubs to achieve from here. It's certainly not the final chapter in the season, far from it, but it is a glorious chapter for Ian Everett and for Bolton Wanderers. They have been, by some margin, deserving winners today at Wembley Stadium. They will get their hands on the trophy shortly. Full time at Wembley in the Papa John's Trophy final. Bolton Wanderers 4, Plymouth Argyle 0.
Well, this is how much it means at Wembley. Look at those scenes. A club, a set of supporters, a town that went through so much just a few short years ago. They still have work to do to get back to where they want to be. But this is a significant step, isn't it, in the right direction? And more than that, it's an opportunity to reflect really on the progress that has already been made to celebrate what Bolton Wanderers are once again to their town and what they've achieved in this game. Winners of this competition for the second time in their history, 34 years on from the last victory. And with the promise of much more to come, really, a platform from which to push on for the rest of the season. It will be a battle that may well go right to the wire in the race for the playoffs. Currently occupying a top six spot only on goal difference. They have occupied a top six spot for much of the season. And they will take real confidence from this display against one of their promotion rivals but also from the way that they handled the occasion, that they stepped up to the big stage so seamlessly against opponents, really, who appeared to get stage fright. Plymouth never got going. Caught cold from the early corner and were always playing catch-up and never looked likely to get there. The nerves that he admitted to before the game, that he admitted to before the semi-final, that set up this big day out in the Wembley sunshine, long since disappearing now. And before turning his attention to those challenges to come, it is important to savour the here and now. To remember these scenes, to take them all in. To crave them again, of course. A competition that began in the group stages for them back at the end of August. With four goals scored against Crew Alexandra. Their total today in the competition taken to 23 by the four scored in this final. Their only defeat was on penalties at Tranmere in the second group fixture after a 2 2 draw on the Wirral. Victories have followed against Leeds United, against Barrow, against Manchester United, against Portsmouth. Locally at Accrington Stanley in the semi final when they scored twice late on. Here, they got the goals early to put themselves in a position that they would never relinquish. It means so much to those in charge as well, doesn't it? Sharon Britton tries to stay away from the spotlight to a certain extent, part of the Football Ventures consortium that rescued the club from impending liquidation in 2019. And now present to watch them win at Wembley. Painful for Plymouth. But they need to remember these moments as they regroup and will go again in pursuit of automatic promotion that remains their priority. And that would always have been the case regardless of the outcome this afternoon. But there are psychological aspects to this that Stephen Schumacher will have to deal with now to try and pick up his Plymouth players to ensure that the defeat of today doesn't cloud the rest of their season, doesn't affect the rest of their campaign. No reason why it should, but not only have they been beaten, the manner in which they've been beaten, the size of the scoreline will be particularly tough to take for those from Devon. As they make their way up to the Royal Box to pick up the runners-up medals, Bolton can only prepare for what is to come. Get ready for their moment. Concerning to see Owen Toll in the protective boot after the injury he suffered right at the end. And we'll certainly hope that that hasn't soured an afternoon of celebration of otherwise unbridled joy for this famous football club. A century on since they featured in the first game at Wembley. And now back here as winners once more. An award for all that has been done behind the scenes to get them back on track, really. Club first founded 149 years ago still very early in the managerial career of uh, Stephen Schumacher and I'm sure that he will use a disappointment like this as motivation for the future still only 38 and he took over at the end of December 2021 
had such high hopes for this afternoon, which never came to fruition. Instead, it's Bolton's day. The trophy will be presented to them very shortly, actually, by one of their biggest fans, Ian Fraser, winner of the competition for the right to do so in the Royal Box. There's Geffen Jones, who had the final say in the scoring. He's here watching on as a non-playing member of an Everton squad in an FA Cup semi-final. But front and centre today at Wembley. So many playing their part, not just today, but throughout the course of this competition. Many clubs using it early on, at least in the group stages, as an opportunity to assess the prospects of some of their younger players. Well, certainly the case for Plymouth, who utilised 30 members of their squad in total throughout the course of the eight-game competition, as it proved to be for these two. Bolton rewarded, though, for the declaration at the start of the season from Ian Effort that they would make this competition a priority, that they sense their chance of success in it, and they are just about now to reap their rewards. The Ricardo Santos, the centre-back, who already described this as one of the proudest days of his career when leading the team out at Wembley, will now lead them up the steps to the Royal Box to get his hands on the silverware. So many incredible stories throughout this side, wherever you look. Wherever they have come from, they have come together to form a team of uh, unbreakable spirit and resolve. That will be tested again in the remaining weeks of the season as they push for the playoffs. But that is for later. This now is their moment to embrace and enjoy. An acknowledgement of the incredible support that Plymouth have had, the incredible support that both sides have had. In a crowd of just short of 80,000 at Wembley today for this meeting of two teams from the third tier. They have done their division proud in reaching this final. How many more steps? Says Ricardo Santos. It has been in every sense a long journey to get here. Be few prouder men inside this stadium right now than Ian Ever. Sure, he'll be the first to pass the praise on to the players, but he's played his part. Sharon Britton has played her part. The town has come together to celebrate their club that they fought so hard to preserve less than four short years ago. in a position that relatively few players ever find themselves. About to take the final few steps up to the Royal Box and receive a winner's medal at Wembley. It's certainly not the limit of their ambition this season, far from it. But these are scenes to savour. These are smiles that have been well earned. And now the reward is about to be provided. The winners' medals around the necks of the Bolton Wanderers players. Four of whom were on the score sheet today to broaden the smile on the face of their boss. What a job that he has done so far. The first to acknowledge, I'm sure, that there is more to come. But occasions like this can provide that platform, that's what he will be hoping. They have the taste for a Wembley win now. and beaten 5-0 by Stoke City on their last visit here a dozen years ago as a top-flight team in the FA Cup semi-final. Now looking back up the football pyramid again, but looking up with optimism, looking up with belief. One or two tears shed, perhaps. The trophy presented to the captain, Ricardo Santos. Bolton Wanderers are Wembley winners again. 
more memories made today. They win this competition for the first time in 34 years. A long wait for another cup final success at Wembley. Scenes to savour after a day in which they were deserved winners, certainly. They were emphatic winners. The silverware will be passed along the line. The smiles belong to everybody in Bolton White. Dreaming now maybe of more to come this season. Dreaming maybe of a return visit to Wembley. But first, they will let this success sink in. Off to a super start today and never looking back. Two goals inside the first ten minutes, another just four minutes into the second half. Gethin Jones making it 4-0 just beyond the hour. Plymouth never really had a foothold in the game at any stage. It's been a while for the Wanderers. And now Ian Everett gets his hands on the trophy as well. They will revel in this. They will enjoy it together. And then they will regroup and prepare for a visit. Back to Devon of all places to Exeter City on Good Friday in the resumption of their push for the playoffs in League One. But they will do so with a trophy in the cabinet. For Stephen Schumacher and Plymouth, only a period of reflection on what might have been on the one that got away. But make no mistake, he is watching this and he is determined to ensure he will not be in his position again at the end of the season. Such a storied football club, Bolton Wanderers, over so many seasons. Synonymous, really, with Wembley in the early days. A century on from the famous White Horse final. So many more memories, some painful, some joyous. Another chapter in the latter is scripted today in the Papa John's Trophy final. How they have all played their part, and these celebrations will go on much longer into the evening, I'm sure. And then attention turns to those final eight fixtures to try and clinch that playoff place. And who knows, maybe they will be back here at Wembley before the end of the season, we shall see. But certainly today has been Bolton Wanderers' day. They have beaten Plymouth Argyle by four goals to nil. They are winners of the Papa John's Trophy.